All right, y'all, so this week's episode of Love and Hip Hop Hollywood was given what it was given. So let's give it what we got. First things first, shout out to Mona, bitch. She said, the VMAs is not gonna fuck up my numbers, ho. So we gonna come on an hour early. And we gonna promote the VMAs. Oh, get ready for the VMAs, bitch. Because what you gonna do is still tune in to Love and Hip Hop. So the episode opens up with the boys playing basketball. Booby, unless you got a storyline down the line, I'm not understanding why you're here. I'm, yes, I'm root, root, root for the home team, H-Town all day, but if you serve no purpose, bitch, you serve no purpose. So I'm going to need you to find your way into somebody's storyline soon because right now, you're like Mimi Fowles, bitch. Like, I, and I've been not wanting to say that, but somebody tell me what her storyline was last season. Somebody, anybody. Does anybody know who shot at her car in the garage? anybody so anyway back to the basketball game they got mickey monday out there and i don't know if you didn't watch the movie but boo white men can't jump and you experienced that when you was wop bop bam bop bam boom all over the goddamn basketball court you were slipping and sliding all over the damn court so much so that you said fuck this shit i'm just gonna be the water boy i'm gonna leave the sports to the black folks because i just can't like girl uh-uh you didn't even tell your help in a nasty bun like it was just no Mm -mm. But we find out in this episode that he dated Slick Woods. And, mm, that ain't your baby daddy, right? Because, mm -mm. like, like, please tell me you finna be on this season of Love and Hip Hop. Or he paid you to put you in this storyline because, I mean, he cute, but, mm hmm and then Booby gets to asking questions about April. So I'm guessing that's what he gonna work himself in by Lil Fizz saying, nah, we ain't together. We just friends. We besties or whatever. So now Booby's single and he's trying to weasel his way in. So I, like, I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Do April got some magic pussy or something? Because it seemed like a whole bunch of niggas want her. She just said she was with the gang. Of course, we know she was with Amari and now she messing with Fizz. Booby want her. Like... Is it the background? Is it, you know, is it the oohs and ahs that she was doing on the mic? Is it the oohs and ahs that she doing on the mic? Or is it her personality? Like, I don't, not to say she's not a catch. I just wanna know what the fuck it is. And then they wrap that scene up with A1 talking about, I'm gonna make it right with Lyrica. I'm gonna make it right. Oh, okay, now you wanna make it right. Okay, great. Cause last week he didn't wanna talk about it. So, hmm. So glad you're on, oh Lord Jesus. He reminds me so much of my ex. Now you wanna own it because you wanna move forward. Okay, great. Okay, so, got it, got it. Perfect segue to Lyrica. She was the next scene, she apartment shopping or whatever, and she got Princess along with her. And I'm thinking, hmm, why is Princess there? But Princess must have thought the same thing, so she said, let me explain. So I don't know what, she was just like, girl, I feel you because I had to do the same thing with Ray J. We weren't married yet, but he was out being our dog and doing this and doing that. Like, at least Ray J was owning his shit. Like, we was watching him cheat on you. Like, in the video, you came in the room and you was throwing shit at all the dancers and shit. We saw that. Like, at least he owned it. You know, you knew what type of person he was. Like, okay, I, I just, I love A1 and I love Lyrica. I just, stop playing with y'all marriage. That's what I really want to say. Just stop, stop, before it really is a problem. Like, I mean, no, just stop. Look at Rashida and Kirk. Use them as an example. They play with their marriage. They got a really fucked up situation. People is saying that that's not Kirk, baby, but even if it ain't, some real problems came from that shit. Like, for real. K. Michelle and Britney B. I don't know why Britney B. decided to tell K. Michelle that she was working with Black China as it referred to music. You know how this woman feel. And she let your ass have it. Bitch, you not finna come here, waste my time, and tell me about some goddamn Black China, bitch. I was in a wheelchair on stage, fighting for my music. Still can't put out a country record to save my life, bitch. You gonna tell me that some bitch who was just la di da di da was like, oh yeah, I wanna sing too. Girl. And here go Brittany B. Who's this say? She doesn't take her thing seriously. They didn't even want you in the industry. Are you serious? Are you really about to compare K. Michelle to Black China musically? Brittany, I like you. 
and I want to continue to like you. But shit like this don't make sense. Especially with you being an a and R. Shall we go back to the legends? Teresa LaBarba White. That's really all I know. But still, they sought after real talent. Shouldn't you be following? Well, no, I guess you want to keep your job, so you got to feed into the demand. Uh, okay, that was you. Okay, okay, I get it. So then they get to talking about Lyrica, and K. Michelle was like, mm, that's my little sis. I think we had a huge falling out last season. We just need to make it right. Like, I'm gonna reach out to my sis and I'm gonna make it right. And I would expect for Britney B to be like, you know what, that's really mature of you, sis. Uh-uh. She was like, fuck her. No, we had some bad business. I put her in the studio. I linked her with this person. I linked her with that person. And then she wanna act like I'm a groupie. Like she don't even know me. So fuck that hoe. I'm like, oh. Then she went even further by saying that she wouldn't have a career if it wasn't for A1. Oh. Okay. Um, maybe you know something I don't, because the story that we've been told to believe is that Lyrica was the one that was on and popping with Chris Brown. She introduced her boyfriend, he rode her coattails, and he then went to the top. To say there would be no Lyrica without A1, girl, I'ma need you to do an expose and spill some tea. Mickey Monday chose Akon over Empire. Use a fool. He chose Africa over music. He let go of Lady Gaga. He is over in Africa giving these people clean water and lights and whatever else he is doing. But baby, he ain't been in music in a long time. And if he has, he ain't been doing that well because bitch, I ain't heard Akon's name in reference to music in some years. So even if he was promising you all this stuff, one would be a little, mm -mm, like I would be a little apprehensive because bitch, where is your success to date? Now bitch, if you tell me, Listen, I can pay you. I got X, Y, and Z going on in Africa, and we finna build this. Okay, I'm inclined to go with you because I know you really doing shit out there. You probably would have did better signing with Jay Holiday, girl. Like, was Chingy not available? Like, <laughs> uh, girl, like, mm. and then we flip over and we see Akon. And Akon got his little cute tenderoni wife, and then we find out through the wife that bitch, she is one of many. So I'm just gonna call her concubine because bitch, I don't even know her name at this point. And she was like, I used to mess around with Mickey Monday because after I found out I was a concubine. Bitch, hold on. Why the fuck are you married to this man and you don't know he got other wives? What are y'all talking about? How soon after y'all met did y'all get married? Like, y'all didn't talk about the intricacies of each other's lives in pillow talk, over dinner, on the phone, through text. Bitch, Call me crazy, call me old school, but I like to integrate some chivalry in today's dating. I like to have what I call an interview session. Bitch, well, I just go down the line for a good 30 minutes just asking you random questions. What's your favorite color? What's your... I just need to know who you are. Like, you don't know he got other wives? You didn't find this out until after y'all got married. Bitch, you the fool. So anyway, you left for a year or whatever, and in that year's time, you was talking to Mickey Monday. Now y'all broke up and Mickey Monday is signed to Akon. So my question first is, does Akon know this? Does he know he has signed? Well, maybe he don't care. Because later on in the episode, y'all went to dinner. So maybe this shit worked for him because if you ain't doing the right thing, he could just go to wife two, three, four, five and get what he needs. So girl, all right. A1 and Lyrica talk. A1 basically mm, didn't apologize. He was just like, I want to fix this. So come on tour with me. And if that wasn't bad enough, there's only two more dates left. We're both artists, and now you're asking me to come on tour with you. Cute. And so Lyrica is like, girl, I don't know, because, you know, my heart is broken. la di da di da Like, I just don't know. And his response to that was, not, baby, I understand. I'm going to make it right. I'm so sorry for breaking your heart and embarrassing you, even though he put all of that out there. He was like, you going to pass up on a sold-out tour? Everything to you is about money, about fame, about success out there. What about the success of your marriage, of your relationship, of your loyalty, of your monogamy? What about the success of all of that? Because you got straight F's, bitch. You about to repeat all courses because 
You know, like, I... But Lyrica, you know, like, do what works for you. You you want to get back out there. You want to put your music out there. You want to be popping again. So, bitch, if it's a sold-out stage, hit it. But a bitch like me, I take them tour dates. And, bitch, we still ain't good. Because, boom, cack. But then again, I'm not Lyrica because I wouldn't have cheated in the first place. I don't believe in cheating. I pride myself on being damn near 30 years old and I have never cheated in my life. Me, per I will just tell you, bitch, it's not working. I got to go. This right here, mm -mm. I will find a way, bitch. I will become problematic. Like, I'm going to make sure we are done before I move the fuck on. I'm just, honestly, I'm the type of person, and I'm going to get back to the story, because <laughs> I'm the type of person, if I got eyes for you, I don't see nobody else. If you know me, you know I have a thing for Mario. You could let me love you. I love him. If I'm with a dude and I'm like together, Mario could be in front of me naked begging me to sleep with him and I would be like, I am so sorry. This is tempting and I'm not even gonna look down there because I want to. But you gotta go. That's just me. Like, I just, mm, whatever. Monice, April, and Britney. So you got Monice and April singing. April, this is what I meant, bitch. When I said the other episode, when you was like, I can sing, sing. And I was like, mm, no, not so much. Maybe you giving a Cassie T. Bitch, your voice is basically the way every Mariah Carey song starts. Whispers. Girl, what? Uh, like, you can't sing. Jennifer Hudson can sing. Fantasia can sing. Little Mo can sing. I heard a little piece piece from Britney. She. I don't know. I don't, I don't know about that. Tamar Braxton can sing. Brandy can sing. Beyonce can sing. Demi Lovato can sing. If nothing else, all of these bitches got one thing in common that you don't. Power! Bitch, you can't sing. Now, Brittany came in, she did her little one too. And then she was just like, now listen, I don't feel like y'all there yet. And then it became this battle of, no, this is what we're arguing. No, this is, and I'm just like, bitch, it's just good business. I would have ended that whole conversation. The fact that we're in the blogs now for hating each other, for us to go on tour, is the new, the boy is mine, bitch. Like, it is. Pay me. Bitch, VH1, Mona Scott Young, Big Fish, Brandy, Monica, Moniz, and April. Pay me. Because I just came up with y'all whole storyline. Wrapped up in a 90s song. Y'all bitches go on tour. This shit is gonna work and call it the Boy Is Mine tour. And Monice, I know you don't like Brandy, but you closer to Brandy than you are Monica, bitch. Let's just keep it a buck. Lyrica and K. Michelle. This needed to happen. I love when people can make amends and come together and reunite. Like, it was real cute. K. Michelle was crying for Lyrica. She gave her some sound advice. Bitch, do what makes you feel whole. You are a damn good mom. You go through things. Pick yourself back up and roll. Just go. You got this. Now, when you go on tour me again, bitch, don't be late. I'm going to spaz out on your ass again. But I love you. Yes. Now for this Britney B mixer, y'all. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. Okay. So Britney B got this mix at the bowling alley or whatever. Mr. Ray is there. People showing up. People swarming in or whatever. And then Zell Swag comes. Zell Swag is invited, but he brings Paris with him. He comes. He hugs Britney. And let me just say, I was liking the neon. Even though she got a fat ass, I was liking the neon. He hugs Britney. Then he hugs Mr. Ray. And then he is, you know, talking about how they made peace. They apologized. They really just loving on each other. The first part that pissed me off was when Paris was like, uh-uh, not here. We not going to fake. Let's just hide and buy. No, nah, bitch. If you want to keep that energy, that's fine. But let other people be positive if they want to be. Okay? You can hold grudges all you want to. But, bitch, I'm not going to get gray hairs and wrinkles in my motherfucking face because I'm mad at a hoe that don't even matter. So, just like I was feeling like, mm, with her energy... 
So was Brittany. And Brittany was like, you know what? I was trying to be nice, but I invited you, not her. And Paris was like, oh, I come here all the time. I come here all the time. Okay, Paris, I got to give your ass a piece, and then I'm going to hop on Brittany. I'm not going to give you much. Paris, yeah, you do come all the time. You can say that. I don't know that to be true, but you can say that. Even if you do, this ain't the time of you just randomly showing up. You showed up to come to her event. So the I come here all the time excuse is not going to work for you, boo. And don't embarrass yourself. If the person who's holding this event say, I don't want you here, remove thine self. How you going to argue with a bitch whose event it is? You can't argue to stay at somebody's event who don't want you there. The argument should never happen. Oh, 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 how are you going to do? This ain't your shit. This is my shit. This ain't my establishment, but this is my event. So, bitch, you can stay in the ball alley. Take your ass to the ball. Take your ass to another lane. If it's like, oh, uh, main event, take your ass to the arcade. Play you some laser tag, but bitch, you can't be in this space. So, I suggest you take a cameraman and you beat it because you can't be down here. Now, Brittany, why in the fuck did you think that Zell was going to show up and not bring Paris? Knowing that it was an opportunity for both of them to be on camera, an opportunity for both of them to get a check, and their best friend, so they go everywhere together. The fact that you even know Zell, you automatically know that he is joint at the hip with Paris. So unless you told Zell verbatim, I'm inviting you only, no plus ones, he had every reason and right to bring his friend. He always does. And of course, Brittany was on her shady shit. Did you Uber here? Da, 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 da. And then after she said Paris wasn't invited, she was like, and you can Uber away. And then Paris, it clicked. She was like, oh, you fuck with Game Michelle. That's why you on that Uber shit. Da, 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 da. Girl, we never gonna lay that down. Especially if we are Team K Michelle. But Brittany, obviously you don't know Zell very well. A, you should have known he was gonna bring Paris. And B, you should have known he wasn't gonna stand there and let you talk about his best friend like that. He read your ass. I mean, he didn't go in, but he was just like, we can be shady, big ass. Blah, blah, blah. He went in because it's like, you not, just like you defending K. Michelle, I'm going to defend my friend. It is what it is. And y'all, that's how the episode ended. It was given what it was given. I was going to give y'all VMAs first because I posted a poll on my Instagram. Y'all be hitting on my Instagram and my Twitter because, bitch, I am a hoot on social media. But I'm off tomorrow. So I can give more time to that video and really space it out and give y'all everything y'all need for a VMA reaction. So y'all will get the VMA video tomorrow. But yeah, this episode was given what it was given, so I gave it what I got. Make sure you are commenting, liking, and subscribing, and that that notification bell is lit so bitch you can get a motherfucking notification every time I'm in the room. Same place, same time.